Hi, I'm Sakari Lahti, product manager here at Trimble. In this video, I will show you our extension Design to Cost. First, I will give you a few examples why you should use the tool. After that, I will show you how to set it up and how to use it. Design to Cost tool is a flexible tool for dynamically linking a cost parameter to the model objects. Based on your unit cost formula, the tool will calculate the total cost for the units in the model. It's a powerful and visual asset at the sales phase when building size and structures gets iterated. With Tecla Structures fast modeling capabilities, it's fast to create alternative design solutions and compare the costs of those alternatives. Even a rough cost formulas might guide you towards a cheaper solution at the early phase of the project. Other benefit is to pass the cost knowledge to the designers. It helps them to make more cost-efficient decisions and motivates them to optimize the structures. Last major benefit is after the project has been delivered and you may need to do subsequent invoicing. Comparing the original design with the final helps the client to understand the cost impacts of the changes during the project. And now I will show you the tool in Tecla Structures. Okay, now you can see a conceptual precast parking building that has some columns, beams, hollow cores, and walls. I will then open the design to cost tool from the component catalog, and you can see now the main user interface of the tool. By selecting objects in the model, it calculates the price that has been defined in the cost categories. Pressing that cost categories a button opens a definitions dialog where you can see the cost structure that has been formed for this example. But in order to show you how to create this, I will then delete this and let's start from scratch. So I will first add a new group uh, that I will have here as a, as a precast example. So I will name it precast. Then from this dropdown, I control the main properties that are automatically shown in the dropdowns when selecting the model properties. So I will use a cast unit as that is the type for the precast units. Then I will add a filter so that everything that should belong to this category needs to pass this filter. And for that, I will use a cast unit type property. And that is a language dependent. Uh, so in English, it's a precast, but I can use this get button in the tool also to fetch the value from the, from the model object itself. But please notice that in the default settings, the example definitions contains language dependent filter. Then to that group, I will add a new product. I will call this column. So all the columns should go to this category. And in this model, I have used a cast unit prefix to categorize the model objects. Of course, you can use, for example, a class or a name or some UDA to define a different product types that you want to have a different formulas for calculation. But again, I will add a filter. And like mentioned, I'm using a cast unit prefix getting that from the model. I can again use this get button so you can see that it's a C and there we have the definition filter. Then I will start to add cost elements. First, I want to add uh, this kind of setup and handling cost that happens on the factory. It happens for all the uh, elements. So it's kind of Per piece, there's a certain cost for setting up the pallets and handling it at the, at the factory facilities. And let's say that that is a 50 euro cost. Then I will add another one, which will be more this kind of size based column. And for that, uh, I will just name it size. And for the property from the model I will use for columns, I will use volume. I will use only net concrete values 
uh, and the net volume to determine the cost. And let's say that it's uh, 400 euros per cubic meter. Then I will add another cost element, which is transportation. And for that, I will use a weight as a parameter. So I want it to be relative to the weight of the element. And as the weight is in kilograms in my options, I will set it also to be very low. So 10 cents per kilogram of the transportation. And then finally, I will add a erection cost. And from the history, I know that for columns, including the crane or excluding the crane, whatever I want to define, the unit cost in this case would be 50 euros per column. And now I have defined four different uh, cost elements to the columns and of course i can get these uh, cost elements to be even more detailed but for this very rough calculation i'm using only these four then i can add a new product it will automatically kind of copy the settings from the previous so this would be a wall and if we go here to select one of the walls, I can make sure that I'm using the correct filter for that. Setup and handling, let's say that it's a bit less. Size cost, now I want to use area and I will use this specific custom properties that we have for wall area calculation. So I will use the, the cross area and let's say that it's 120 euros per square meter. Transportation is the same cost and erection, let's say that it's uh, slightly cheaper, 40 euros per piece. And now I have defined these two products here. Uh, when I'm kind of going through the different product categories, I can use, for example, the selecting model command to validate that okay these all belong to that category and then, then I can use for example the hide command which makes it easier for me to follow up which ones of the uh, products in the model already have a cost definitions. Okay one thing that you don't want to probably maintain inside of this tool if you want to create a library is the cost values itself as those keeps updating and those might be changing uh, depending on the project. So for example, the transportation is a typical cost that is a different from project, pro from project to project. So the tool can actually link into a Excel file, which you can see here as an example, what you can download also from the example file package in the Tecla warehouse. So on the first tab page, there's already some predefined examples, but just to show you, let's say that this would be test transportation and it would be 50 euros. So this is the kind of uh, property name that will be shown on the tool and this is the value that it will use. And this is just a description as a kind of reminder what it means. You can have, of course, whatever notes and comments in, in the file that you're using. But then I will save that and also use that as the base for the tool. It will take a few seconds to load the values, but then you can see all the parameters that has been defined for that particular file. And then if you select that, you can see here the value that it is using. So in this way, it's easier uh, for you to maintain the cost parameters in a different location. And of course, the cost definitions might be kind of calculated also inside the Excel itself. So now I could save this uh, as a template. I could save it as the uh, setting that I'm using in the model. But to show a bit more complex cases, I will 
open a cost definitions that I have made earlier. So here you can see the definitions for multiple different product types already. And if we go to the Holocore, I will show you, for example, the area, area cost has been defined here. So from my cost database, I know that there's a different uh, costs for different profiles of the Holocores. So I can add these kind of uh, filtered cost elements. So it means that uh, instead of giving a same value for all of those products, I can add an additional kind of filter layer. And here I'm using a profile. So if the profile matches the ones defined here, it will use a different cost value. So in this way, I can enter more complex calculations if I want to get, get the uh, calculation more accurate. Also, for example, lifter, I'm adding only if the width, width of the holocore is not 1200 millimeters. So that is one way also to, to use the toll because if it's a narrowed slab, there's a always lifters needed and therefore it's additional costs. And of course, I could add uh, sewing costs also based on that. We have also properties to list down the sewings that uh, the Holocore has. So I can add, for example, a price per meter of the sewings. If I show another example for the solid walls, uh, I'm adding because the lifters are not in the model, but I have added an additional cost based on the weight of the wall panels. So as you know, you need heavier lifters if the, if the wall is heavier. So therefore, I have defined these uh, filtered cost elements for, for the solid wall lifters. And here you can see the filter definition. So I'm using weight net and then it needs to be higher than 8 tons, but less than 10 tons to get this cost value. So that is the base principle, how to set these things up and how to connect the cost values also to the uh, Excel sheet. So for example, here in the transportation, I could use again the same Excel file. And just to show an example, you could for example, have additional sheets in the Excel file where you define, for example, the project specific things. Let's say that uh, distance from the factory to the law, to the erection site. And the tool will calculate in this uh, example, I have four different cost categories. So instead of uh, having just the same uh, amount for depending on, on the weight, I have four different cost categories. As I know that my truck can take 20 tons. So then if it's between 15 and 20 tons, it will take the whole price of, of, the, of the truck and so on. You can get very complex and uh, whatever is the way that you want to control the cost calculations, you can set very complex systems inside the tool. And of course, the filters are very flexible. So you can also have, let's say, these kind of additional UDAs that you might want to add for estimation. So that instead of making the complexity on the design to cost tool side, you can add information to the model objects. So then creating the same kind of filters inside of here with the rule sets, you can add those costs based on the definitions here. So for example, if there's a fastening plates in some object types and you want to not to model those, but you just want to add the information that, okay, here is fastening plates. Or for columns, you want to add the number of corbels because that is a cost factor for columns. So you can add those and then create a corresponding setting here on the cost definitions that hey, add, add additional cost if there is a corpus defined and take the number of the columns from the, uh, from the value that has been defined in the UDAs. So that is the way how to create very complex settings. 
And if I redraw this view to get everything visible again, I will show you just the additional feature that we have in the tool. If I filter down only the wall elements visible, I can use this uh, color by cost extremes, which colors all the all the objects that has a cost inside and uh, makes the gradient coloring depending on the cost per volume. So as you can see that this is the most red and this is because the cost definitions are, are not just dependent on the size. There's kind of fixed uh, prices based on erection and setup costs in the factory. So here I'm delivering very little amount of concrete to the site, but still the cost is relatively much higher than, for example, this wall here on the side. So that is a one way to look at your design and find if there's something that you want to optimize. Another functionality in the tool is the co show costs in the model. So it will just trigger the display settings in the way that it will set the uh, custom property that the tool is using to be visible for the, for the model objects. So here you can see that it's running this script. And now you can see the costs as labels in the model. And finally, I will show you how to use the cost values, for example, inside the organizer. As mentioned, the tool is using this custom property to write the cost value. And you need to add that property as a custom property to organizer. I have created here already the property which has a label cost value, and this is the property name that you need to use. No unit number without the decimal and template for the property type. Then you can create a template by dragging and dropping. Uh, if I load here what I have already created. So this is a costs a template where I'm using the same property as one of the columns. I'm using also a floor and section and name of the cast units. So I have defined also a location breakdown to the project. Then if I select all the cast units and I will clear down also my previous edits. So you should by default see something like this. So on the organizer, I can, for example, combine the identical rows as there is many identical horcore slabs. And then I can start to use grouping. So if I want to, based on section and floor and name, have these categories, so it's easy for me to see, for example, that on the floor one, the total cost is 97,000 and the beams in there are 30,000. I can use also the organizer to highlight the ones that are responding for the row in the object browser. And the other visual way is also to color color based on, on the categories. So these are now matching the colors here on the object browser. And in the same way, you can use the same property name that I showed, for example, the IFC export, if you want to save an IFC version of this model where that property is written, so you can compare the original estimate when the project gets ongoing. And also in standard reports, you can get the cost value and also in drawings if needed. Okay, uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this new development and now you know how to set it up. Thank you for watching and goodbye.